So uh, next is heat calculations. So heat calculations is also known as calorimeter, uh, calorimetry calculations. So the basic principle of uh, heat calculations is that uh, when heat flows occurs between two bodies uh, that are isolated from their surrounding, uh, the amount of heat lost by the one body must be equal to the amount gained no, by the other body. In short, it is an energy con uh, conversation, uh, conservation of energy principle. No, So heat is energy in transit so that this simple is really a uh, conservation of energy. No? So uh, basically, no. Uh, we have to identify the problem, no? So identify the relevant concepts. So when heat uh, flow occurs uh, between two or more bodies that are isolated from the air, from their surrounding, the algebraic sum of quantities of the heat transferred to all bodies is zero, no? So we take the quantity heat added to body as positive and quantity leaving as negative. So take note for the sign convention: positive is a body for added and leaving the body is negative. No? So um, the second uh, heat calculation uh, strategy is to set up the problem using the following steps. No? So identify the objects that exchange heat. So each object may undergo temperature change only uh, sometimes a uh, phase change at a constant temperature or both of them. So use specific heat equation for the heat transfer in um, temperature change or little heat equation for the phase change, no? etc. So and again after that for your formulas being used, no, uh, you can actually consult the tables for values uh, of specific heat and molar heat capacities shown here and list the known and unknown quantities and identify your target uh, variables. No? And then execute the specific latent heat equations and energy conservation uh, relations. Summation of Q is equivalent to zero. Or you could actually do a uh, Q entering is equivalent to Q leaving. You could actually do that or you could actually do this one. And take note uh, that change in temperature is equivalent to T phi del minus T initial. No? So if phase change occurs, you may not know in advance whether all or only part of the material undergoes a phase change. So make a reasonable guess. If that leads to an unreasonable result, such as final temperature higher or lower than initial temperature, uh, your guess must be wrong. So uh, just try again. No. So just make it a point that is uh, the result or uh, just evaluate your final answer and then uh, um, Make a uh, make a re if it makes sense, then it is good. No. So let's take for example this one. So a camper uh, pours 0.5 kilogram of coffee initially in a pot at uh, 80 degrees Celsius into a 0.15 kilogram aluminum cup initially at 20 degrees Celsius. So what is the equilibrium, uh, equilibrium temperature? So assume that a coffee has the same specific heat as water so, and, and that no heat uh, is exchanged with the surrounding. So this entails the concept of uh, energy conservation principle and uh, we are to use actually the specific heat concepts to this one. So um, identifying what are givens and identifying what our um, target variable is. The target variable is actually the temperature, no? Uh, the equilibrium temperature. So we have here the mass of the coffee, uh, 0.5, the aluminum is 0.15, and the um, initial temperature for the coffee is actually um, 80, no? That, that will become 80. I will change that one. And then um, this one, aluminum 20, um, copper, and then etc. And then um, for the energy conservation relation, we could do um, energy entering is equivalent to the energy leaving. And then uh, Q, aluminum. And then take note for this one. Since uh, the system now is the aluminum, uh, the aluminum, so from the coffee itself, 
So the heat is leaving on that part. So we are using the negative part here. No? And then uh, plus because of the addition of heat on the aluminum pad no? through the addition of heat from the coffee. So the coffee uh, the coffee pot is actually has been removed or has uh, the heat has left that uh, system so that will become negative and then just substituting our variables no so we in this one uh, let's just stay with uh, the 70 degrees celsius here and then uh, just substituting our variables and then uh, our remaining variable is the T or the equilibrium temperature for both of them. And then uh, the main key point here is actually to use positive here uh, when the heat enters the system, which is makes sense on the aluminum since um, it, the heat is added um, from the coffee. And then negative because oh, on the coffee, uh, the heat lives on it. So the, the temperature, the equilibrium temperature is actually 66.9 degrees Celsius. Uh, for our sample problem number three, um, in a particular cap stove, uh, only 35% of the energy released in burning gasoline goes to heating the water in a pan. So on the stove, so how much gasoline must be burned to heat 1.5 kilogram of water from uh, 25 degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius and boil away a 0.2 kilogram of it. So analyzing this uh, problem uh, entails us to use uh, two equations. So the first one is for the temperature changed. So what uh, from 25 degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius. So the temperature change um, the energy or the heat that en the heat energy that is produced from the temperature change of 25 degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius entails to us to use the specific heat uh, formula to that. And then with this one from 100 degrees Celsius, so it will maintain the temperature here as uh, the phase change is from liquid state to vapor state. So we will be using actually the phase changes, a uh, phase change formula. So Q is equivalent to plus minus ML. V. LV is uh, because, so kindly take note for the constant for the um, LV or the heat of vaporization. Uh, since uh, there is a phase change from liquid to vapor without a change in temperature, which is uh, 100 degrees Celsius. No? So in solving our sample problem number three, it requires us to use uh, the equations um, that heat required to change temperature, change in temperature, and then this one, uh, heat transfer phase change equations. No? And um, to raise the temperature of water from 25 degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius actually requires uh, the following formulation that um, the temperature change formula, the mass of the material, well, back is 1.5 kilogram multiplied by the specific heat is 4,190 and the uh, temp uh, temperature change is from 100 degrees Celsius less 25 degrees Celsius. Uh, that equates to 471.4 times 10 to the 3 joules. And then the required to, uh, to boil 0.2 a kilogram of water at 100 degrees Celsius. So this entails the following formula. So at constant uh, temperature, the, the following is uh, only changing in a phase from liquid to vapor. Um, so our for our uh, constant is actually this one. No, so LV is 2.256 times 10 to the 6 joules per kilogram. So mass of the material that undergoes a uh, changes in phase without a change in temperature that equates to 451.2 times 10 to the 3 joules. No? Uh, total energy that we will be needing is Q1 plus Q2 that equates to a 471.4 times 10 to the 3 joules plus 451.2 times 10 to the 3 joules is equivalent to 922.6 times 10 to the 3 joules. And um, with that 35% of energy, 
uh, relief in burning gasoline of heating, we can divide it by 35% that arrives to 2,636 2, times 10 to the 3 uh, joules. So since only 35% is needed, so th this energy is actually the total energy needed. And then uh, uh, we can compute for the grams in gasoline uh, through uh, the following uh, conversion factor that we have uh, looked into on our past lives. Past lives, so one gram is equivalent to 46,000 joules. No? And then that equates to a mass of gasoline is only 57 uh, grams of gasoline. Uh, we could actually burn, um, we could actually boil the water and then let it evaporate uh, for a while. No? And then uh, let's proceed to mechanisms of heat. So we have three mechanisms of heat transfer, uh, namely uh, conduction, convection, and radiation. So uh, conduction actually occurs uh, within a body or between two bodies in contact. So just shown in this part, no. So conduction occur uh, through the heat uh, in contact. You can feel the heat transferred to your palm uh, through conduction. So convection um, depends on the motion of mass of one region of space to another. So let's take for example uh, this one, uh, boiling water. So the heat passes from the burner uh, to the into the pot, no? heating the water at the bottom. Uh, bottom no? So, uh, upon heating the water on the bottom, then the water, uh, then the hot water in it uh, rises no? and the cooler water moves down to replace it, uh, causing the circular motion. No? Here is the principle of convection. No? So, from hot to cold. No? And then, uh, radiation. Uh, radiation is the heat transfer by electromagnetic radiation, such as our uh, sunshine, no? our sunlight, uh, uh, with no need to matter to be present in the space uh, between the two bodies. So, in depthly speaking, to seeing uh, both of them, um, all of them. No? So, conduction is the way in which energy is transferred through heating by contact so heating by contact hot body to a cooler one or from hot part of a body to a cooler one um, the following formula uh, describes the relationship in a conduction state so heat current in a conduction is equivalent to the rate of heat flow q dq over dt where in thermal conductivity we have here constant of k cross-sectional area of the rod the temperature of hot and cold ends of the rod and then the length of the rod no? so uh, such as in the um on the past uh, slide. So if you hold one end of a copper rod in a place actually the other end in the flame, no. So uh, the end of you holding gets hotter and hotter, even uh, through, uh, even though it is not in direct contact uh, with the flame, no. So heat reaches the cooler end of by conduction through the material. And then here is some of the thermal conductivities of materials uh, for metal, solids, and gases. No? So most common is actually you can, uh, uh, for the copper, uh, steel, silver, and this one solid um, could be styrofoam, no? uh, 0 0.027, and then uh, fiberglass, ice, gases, air, of course, and oxygen. Um, uh, those are the ones that you should uh, familiarize yourself or uh, memorize if you can. No? For example, problem number four, we have here styrofoam cooler has total wall area including the lead of 0.8 meters squared uh, and the wall thickness of 2 centimeters. So it is filled with ice, water, and cans of Omnicola. Omnicola is mostly water, no? all at 0 degrees Celsius. So what is the rate of heat flow? Or heat of heat flow or H no into the cooler if the temperature outside of the wall is 30 degrees Celsius. So how much ice melts in four hours? So of course we will be using the conduct formulas uh, shown in this one, and here is the sample images to our problem. No. 
and then uh, substituting formula uh, formulas to this one the thermal conductivity of the rod material or the material in uh, in the problem is actually styrofoam so of 0 0.027 uh, watts per meter um, times kelvin and then uh, this one is the area cross uh, this one the area as you can see here, the cross-sectional area of the material, which is 0.8 meters squared, and the temperature of the hot and um, cold end, and that integrates to 30 degrees Celsius plus 0 degrees Celsius over the length, which is this one, a point of 2 centimeter or 0 0.02 meter. And that arrives to 32.4 joules per second. What is equivalent to joules per second? No, So uh, that's the rate no the answer for the rate and then and in solving for the um this one heat no or in solving for the mass we are to first actually solve for the q or the heat of the material by this ones so those dq over dt so since this is uh, not instantaneous in <clears throat> somehow no so q now is equivalent to ht wherein h has been computed earlier multiplied by the time which is four hours conversion factor into hour to second that equates to 466.56 uh, times 10 to the three joules and uh, for the heat no for the phase changed, uh, no, for the phase changed from solid to liquid, for uh, from the ice, uh, from the ice which is solid into liquid state with a change in temperature, uh, we have here the following constant of 3.34 times 10 to the 5 joules per kilogram. Kindly take note for the um, uh, for the constant for the heat of fusion. So we have computed for the Q or the heat uh, on the material and then uh, our mass is 1.4 kilograms and then uh, convection so what is convection no? uh, convection is a transfer of heat by mass motion of a fluid from one region of space to another so convection heat transfer is very complex process and there is no simple equation uh, to describe it so conduction you can know the equation for that on our past slides and <clears throat> convection we have no equation underlying equation for that since it is a very complex process so um convection actually uh, occurs uh when materials when particles with a lot of heat energy in a liquid or a gas moved and take the place of particles with uh, less heat energy no so heat energy is transferred from hot places to cooler places by convection so let's take for example uh, ice melting no so heat moves uh, to the ice from the air no so this causes the mel melting from solid to liquid so another is hot air balloon so a heater inside the balloon heats the air so that the air moves upward no? So this causes the balloon to rise because of the hot air gets trapped inside. No? So when the pilot wants to descend, he releases some of the hot air and cool air takes in place, causing the balloon to lower. So um, uh, with this one, uh, here are some principles in convection. So in lieu for the equation, we have observed from true experimentation that the heat current due to convection is directly proportional to the surface area. So this explains that the while the radiators on the uh, cars and the cooling fins um, um, is actually have a large surface area since the heat is directly proportional to the surface area. Now, so another um, known fact is that the viscosity of fluids slows natural convection near the stationary uh, surface, giving a surface film that on a vertical surface typically has about the same slitting value of uh, 1.3 centimeters uh, of plywood, which has a R value of 0.72. So this actually is the reason why we have experienced the wind chill factor uh, you get cold faster in a colder wind than in um in a still air with the same temperature 
And also, we have observed through a convection experimentation is that the heat current due to convection is found to be approximately to the 5 fourth power of temperature difference between the surface. And then for the radiation part, so this is the third type of um, our uh, temper uh, thermal uh, transfer mechanism. No? So radiation, it is transfer of heat by electromagnetic waves, such as visible light, infrared, and ultraviolet uh, radiation. It entails the following equation. It, uh, the radiation has been described to the following equation. Heat current of radiation is equivalent to the area of the emitting surface multiplied by the Stefan Boltzmann constant, which is equivalent to this one, 5.67 times 10 to the negative 8 uh, watts per meter squared uh, multiplied by the Kelvin raised to 4. And then um, the absolute temperature of the surface uh, raised to 4. So, uh, in radiation, uh, everyone has actually felt the warmth of the sun's radiation and then stands heat uh, from a charcoal grill or glowing coals in a fireplace. No? So, most of the heat from this uh, very hot body reaches you not by conduction and, conver and convection. Um, the intervening is air. In the intervening is air, but by radiation. It is not by conduction and convection. It is by actually radiation. No? So the heat transfer would occur even if there uh, were nothing but vacuum between you and the source of heat. No? So we have here the emissivity of the surface. So uh, deep down, so the concept of emissivity emissivity is actually it is a measure of an object's ability to emit infrared energy no so the emitted energy indicates the temperature of the object no? and then typically um, most organic materials including us has a value of emissivity emissivity close to 0 0.95 no? so let's